feel the heat. We finally made it. I actually borrowed money off her to, to get petrol so I could get to her. Two years ago, I could barely afford petrol. <laughs> and now we paid for, for this, you know, it's ridiculous. What's up everybody, welcome back to the YouTube channel. I hope you're well. We're going vloggy today, a little bit vloggy. Uh, we're going on holiday, I can't wait. This is why this, yeah, I've got, I'm decent. This is why this room, which you can fit into the entire camera, it's an absolute bomb site because we're just trying to fix everything up before we go. Uh, it's about eight o'clock at the moment in the morning. We're leaving at half ten, so we've got two and a half hours to kind of get things ready and get things moving. This is one of those ones where do I tell you the holiday now? Because the title is probably going to be the holiday. So we're going to the Maldives. <laughs> uh, I cannot believe we're in this position. Uh, to even be able to go to the Maldives at this time of year. So we're going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to get some things done and we'll catch up with you in a bit. That's it, we're packed. We're going on holiday! Hi! Let's go. So we got these masks that are supposed to be special. It is making my eyes water because the <laughs> I'm breathing is going into my eyes. It doesn't look crazy busy in here. It's pretty, looks pretty. Yeah, it's quiet, it's mild. We, were, we thought it was going to be crazy busy to be fair, but it's not too bad. We'll see what happens when we get to Qatar though. Turns out just our flight is busy or Qatar is busy. We're at uh, 45 minutes in. About halfway. And then we have it, we're through finally. It took us a, a long time. It's actually about 10, about a quarter past. About 10, minute, 10 minutes after our flight, it's supposed to leave already, so. Flight's half an hour late. We've got, we've got an hour and 40 minutes to transit, so every minute is eating into our transit time i'm hoping we've we've been to qatar before i've been to qatar a few times and it's a pretty like efficient airport so i'm, I'm hoping there's just someone with a sign that says come here but we'll we'll soon find out flight is at 10 past two so we just walked off the plane there's a man waiting with a sign to marley and i never had a better smile on my face He's gonna take us to the gate. We just gotta hope our uh, hope our luggage gets there now. Fingers crossed. We feel the heat. We finally made it. Waiting about half an hour on the on the plane. But we're here. Oh baby, that's the sun I needed on me. Oh my god, we am bloody hot. So uh, if, if you guys couldn't tell, you probably can't tell, we're in the Maldives. We're absolutely blessed to be in the Maldives. Uh, anyone traveling, definitely take a little bit extra time, leave a little bit earlier. Um, everywhere is doing like two, three checks and of course you've got to fill in passenger locator forms and you've got to have your COVID test and then you've got to have different other forms that you've got to fill them in. So give yourself a little bit of time if you are traveling. Um, it's been a long, long journey and it's roasting here. I'm dripping, I'm sweating, I need a shower. But we're in the fucking Maldives, mate. This is somewhere I've always wanted to go, somewhere where, this is somewhere actually where I've been before, but I must have been five, six years old and uh, my parents took me, so I can barely remember it. And if I can, I didn't appreciate it like I am now. Paid for this myself, you know, come with my girlfriend, living, living, uh, an incredible life and I can't believe it and I'm super grateful to be here so we'll take you through this holiday probably gonna get a first meal first meal Burger King because I'm absolutely fucking starving and we're not gonna get to the uh, to the hotel for another hour so we'll see you there Oh, wow. 
disinfected. Been disinfected. Oh, we like Whoa. this. We like this. It is shuffle three. Should make a bean bag? Perfect for me. So we're here, I cannot believe it. It's about a hundred million hours later. We are here in the Maldives. The fucking Maldives meet. Little two two little scallies from it from the UK in the Maldives with their own private beach. We so we're actually <laughs> So we're hit, we're in this room for four nights and then we actually moved to an overwater villa. Uh, we we weren't sure whether to just go with the overwater villa for the whole time, but we thought we'd better get like the full experience and have like your own beach, your own, like the beach hut, because we both love the beach as well. So we've got our own beach place for four nights. And then we're going on to the overwater villa with an infinity pool, which is going to be amazing. So we've got four nights here, which I can't wait to just get into. I'm starving. I'm going to put the camera down for a little bit and uh, get ourselves sorted. So we have our starters here. Little bread section. There's a pasta section here. And then all the desserts. The grill section here. And then the pit over here. That's the food. So this is literally the beach, this is where we've been sat. And then look at this sunrise, it's about to go down, sunset. And really no one, no one has been on this. No one has been on this beach at any point, so. Kind of just feel like we've got this. It, 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 it's one of them places where you feel like you've got the whole island, island to yourself until you go for dinner. <laughs> and then you realize there's other people here. Yeah. I don't know where they are though. Like where the fuck are they? It's, it's, you know, it's, yeah, from, from what we know, it's not a capacity in there for whatever reason, well, not co for COVID reason, uh, but yeah, I don't know, I don't know how they've spaced it out or what, um, but really, you can't really tell it's so busy and it's not really that busy, obviously, but you can't really tell anyone's here and it's been a very peaceful first day. So we're going to see if we can go catch the sunset. They've got a, a, a sunset bar which you can have a little cocktail on and watch the sunset go down over the Indian Ocean, like over here. This camera is surprisingly good in low light. Very good. Beautiful little sunset. A couple drinky poos, very colorful. You can, in fact, you can even see it over my shoulder. Let me concentrate on that. The purples, the blues, the greens, the dark blues, and it's off my face. Now we're gonna go back, get changed and uh, see what's for dinner. Oh, this is the face of a man who's crashing, burning, and dying. This is still the same day that we landed. Still not slept. I'm absolutely fucked, are you fucked? What? I said I'm fucked, are you fucked? Yeah, I'm fucked. It's seven o'clock now, we're gonna, <laughs> five past seven. We're gonna try and have breakfast. We're, we're gonna try and have breakfast. We're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna try and have dinner. And then just come back and get into bed and sleep. And we're gonna try and stay awake as long as we can, cause no, we're not. Okay, we're going to bed in a minute. Oh my god, Joss, why didn't you put sun cream on? You ginger, make sure you put sun cream on. There's gonna be so many comments, and you're now gonna watch that and think that was me. Uh, yeah. So actually, this was from the the boat journey over. Apparently it's the sun reflecting because it was pretty much cloudy the whole way and it's literally here and here and I had a vest on to here Nowhere else is burnt though. No. None of those jokes. All right guys. We'll see you tomorrow. Peace everybody. We're in the Maldives. Legion. Uh, so we've got the barbell here, like a rack. The dumbbells only go to 25, which is just no good really, but is what it is. And then a cable machine right here, and obviously the view is, is unbelievable. So really, I've just been choosing one barbell compound today. I'm just doing a barbell row. And then I'll just get onto uh, the cable machine and just do some pull downs, 
and then some biceps, probably two, two or three back exercises, one biceps, nothing crazy, half volume, and uh, we'll go into it from there. It's moving day. We're here day, day four or five, and it's moving day. We're, we're changing rooms. I'm pretty sure I told you guys at the start we wanted a little bit of, a little bit of both worlds. So we're going to take you to the new room. We'll show you the new room. I'm going to tell you what the new room. You probably guessed, haven't you? We'll show you in a second. So we've been given our water filter. We've got literally the last one. So it's a long walk. He asked if we want a buggy. I nearly said yes. But Amy's doing steps. But Amy's doing steps, so we've got to do it. <laughs> but here we go. We're on one of these beautiful water villas on the stilts. This, this is the Maldives now. This is, these are the ones that you see pop up on your Instagram for sponsored ads. Five, two, four, baby. We're home. Our luggage is just right. So here we go, water villa vibe. This is a lovely bed. We've got the glass floor, which is incredible. Snacks, but the pièce de la résistance. Slide out. Got our own thing down into the into the bay, which is incredible. But most importantly. There's no one next to it. We've got our own pool. Oh. Which is incredible. The best thing that we could have done was was book that first place, the, the, the beach. We had that for four days, four or five days. We've now got this for six. So we're very, very happy. Another thing I've just spotted. <laughs> as we come through. Got a little closet. We've got the bath here, which overlooks the amazing harbour. And the shower does too. And the shower does too, which is incredible. So, there we have it. Room top. to surprise Amy today with a private beach dinner so we're out here and we've got the best view the nice of the beach over here and we have a beautiful a la carte menu coming in we're in the most beautiful place in the world potentially potentially in the most beautiful place in the world and uh, I'm feeling quite blessed I, I kind of put this on my uh, on my Instagram story yesterday. I think it's important, like, it's, it's in no way, like, a look at me. It's in a no way, like, in that type of, in that type of way. But literally, two years ago, when I first met my girlfriend, just before, I actually borrowed money off her to, to get petrol so I could get to her, like, for Christmas. And I was in a place where I didn't know what I wanted to do. I had no motivation. I had severe anxiety. I had anxiety about watching people making moves. All my friends around me were doing degrees. I was doing a degree as well, but it wasn't, I knew it was a degree that I didn't want to do anything. And all my friends were, you know, they were doing placement years and they had, they had places where they knew they were going to go after uni and, and that kind of thing. And, and I think it's really relatable to a lot of people, especially at uni where you kind of feel a little bit lost, especially when you can do courses that maybe 
don't lead into certain professions and, and you don't necessarily know what you want to do. And, and I was that person and I was crippled by it for ages. When I left uni at like 24 or 23, I can't remember. I didn't have a fucking clue what I wanted to do. I didn't have a fucking clue what I wanted to do. And I spent months saying that, longer than that, and I didn't want to do anything. Why don't you try work here? I don't want to do that. Why don't you try, this is my parents, why don't you try work that I don't want to do that? You know, and I, I just had this real abrasive, probably out of anxiety attitude. Um, and it was really hard to get over it for a very long time. For the whole of my uni career, I had, I had anxiety in it. And it stopped me from doing things. It stopped me from going to the, the conventions, what are they called, like open days, when all the businesses come and they show you like the opportunities that you can take. I couldn't go to any of them because I couldn't face that my future was going to be here. I wanted to be a kid forever. And it took a long, long time to get out of it. And I think the one thing that got out of it, got me out of it was just doing something. And I kind of got backed into the corner. I didn't even make that choice myself, I don't think. I don't think I made that choice of, okay, I'm going to do something and then find out what I don't want to do. But it was actually doing that that f told me what I didn't want to do. So I had two, three, four, maybe four or five jobs uh, and I didn't want to do any of them but I didn't know I didn't want to do them so I tried them and at least in trying them I found out what I didn't want to do if that makes sense and I also found aspects of them that maybe I did want to do so like I actually worked in a gym and I realized I don't really want to work in a gym I worked for Lululemon and I realized I'm quite good of people I'm quite good of customers but I don't really want to work in Lululemon so it was actually that it was actually me doing stuff that helped with it because I in doing stuff that I didn't want to do You learn what you didn't want to do and that's more information than you had when you were wondering what you should be doing uh, And then obviously I was extremely blessed to kind of find this YouTube life or the social media life or the online coaching life which kind of all became one and Then I kind of had that thing in me that I knew I wanted to do so if it, if it doesn't feel right right now for you and you don't really know what you want to do I don't think that's an issue because I think a lot of people go through it and a lot of people have that feeling uh, Just I think my one piece of advice is this to do something um, It's probably not the best advice in the world. There's probably much better advice out of there But that's someone who's been through it someone who's walked through it. I'm 27 now and until I was 25, I had no fucking idea what I wanted to do in life. I want to be a footballer. I want to be a rugby player. That was that was my aspirations. And both of those I gave up before I went to uni. So, you know, I was crippled by anxiety. I was crippled by not knowing what I want to do. And that's the thing that got me out of it. Whether I did that decisively or not, that was what got me out of it. So, two years ago, I could barely afford petrol. <laughs> and now we paid for for this, you know, it's ridiculous. Obviously, Amy paid for some of it as well, but <laughs> we're here and I'm pretty, I'm pretty gassed to be fair. Look at that fucking view. Lovely. We came here for Zen. We came here for paradise and we got exactly that. So we're super blessed. I'm super, I just can't believe it, but more than anything, I'm hungry now. I'm hungry, I was hungry before, but I'm hungry now to get back, to get that fucking pro card. It's right there. Been thinking about it every single day. We've been talking about it every single day. As soon as I come back Monday, uh, rest up that day, and we'll be back to work on that Tuesday and the 22nd, and, and that's it. It'll be game time until, until August, until we go into the pro card shows and see what we can do. The Olympia's obviously this weekend. I'm excited to see what that is. I'm, I'm excited to see Seabum take the win. I'm excited to see Brandon fight Phil. I'm excited to see Ryan Terry, Andre and Raymond do the dance. Um, obviously this video will come out after that so we'll know the results but it's going to be amazing uh, and the future's bright. I'm feeling super like overwhelmed with like feelings of gratitude, you know, blessings, whatever you want to call it and I can't quite believe I'm in this situation but I hope you guys enjoyed the vlog. This is nothing to do with bodybuilding. This is just what I've been doing. I hope you guys enjoyed it. We'll be back very, very soon. IFBB Pro Run. IFBB Pro Card. I fucking need it. Worked for a long time for this. Thank you, guys. Peace.